All right, look what's back in the garage. The hot dog cart. Turns out it's actually a potato cart. Little did I know. Not looking too bad. Not looking too bad. Uh, it's actually back in the garage because uh, we want some modifications done to it. The people who own the cart and the business, they're uh, rapidly outgrowing it for the demand, which is fantastic news for them. And uh, exciting news for us, because I always love seeing success and kind of supporting entrepreneurship. So, uh, one of the things over on this side is a flip up shelf right here for a griddle. I think it's a 17 inch griddle. Uh, so, we're going to put a shelf here that folds up out of the side. These are the hinges that I ordered off of Amazon. They say they support 400 pounds. I don't really believe 400 pounds, but I definitely believe the weight of a griddle and some scraping motion. So uh, we're gonna go on the inside of the frame here, inside of this uh, the steel panel and the stainless steel panel here. We're gonna put a backer so that we actually have something to push against. It's not just this thin wall steel sheet here uh, and we'll weld that to the top bar uh, but yeah it's gonna have two of these hinges it'll come out to about here I think I'm giving it 19 inches and like 18 inches this way uh, so the griddle will have like an extra two inches on every side uh, we're also going to put a back on this shelf so that when you're scraping you can't accidentally push the griddle off and then uh, we're going to give all the edges, uh, the exposed edges here, these two, uh, nice rounded corners so that it's not a snagging hazard. Because the last thing you want to do is walk past this, snag it on your pants, rip your favorite pair of pants, and then torque these hinges, and then drop your griddle, and then your hot dogs, or your baked potatoes, or your brisket, whatever, is all over the ground. It'd be a bad day. So. We're going to round the edges, make it nice and uh, smooth. Let's go on and move to uh, the other side. All right, so over on this side, right here, this snowboard for condiments. Similar hinges, but they're a little shorter. Uh, they're only 10 inch hinges, so this part of the board right here is 10 inches. So we're going to put those hinges on, and then uh, when they get to their venue, Bam. Condiment table. Uh, there's some wood blocks on the back of this board we're going to take off. And uh, if we get enough time, we'll go ahead and uh, knock this down. Somebody painted it, but there's uh, a lot of kind of like grit and stuff in here. And there's not supposed to be. So we're going to see if we can get some matching paint. I don't know what this is. Looks like a seafoam green, maybe like a teal. But we'll see how close we can get with some spray paint. Uh, sand this down, fill these holes. Because you had the holes for what I think are called binders. And then where this wood block was installed, there were some more holes drilled. And then now I'm going to drill even more holes over here. So just to give it a nice smooth finish, uh, I think we're going to fill all these holes in after we sand it down and give it a nice fresh coat of paint. All right, as usual, the garage is cramped. But, next thing up here is going to be a hot box. I don't have it completely figured out yet. Um, a permanent fixture would be ideal because this hot box is kind of heavy. And there's conversation of mounting it and leaving it. But, it's not that easy because that's where the propane bottle goes. The propane tank. And it lifts out. So... If it were to lift out, it's going to hit the bottom of the shelf right here. And uh, that's problematic. So we're going to have to figure something out for this or for the propane tank. I'm ha I have some ideas for the propane tank. We could, we could take this propane tank and this holder here. Throw a propane tank in there so we know the height of it. Because I don't recall. We could also measure. Whatever. 
throw a propane tank in here and completely reconstruct this so that your propane tank, instead of being lifted out, uh, just, uh, you know, something hinged over on that side that just opens up and then you just pull your propane tank out this way. So that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Um, just because the amount of weight on this shelf that we're going to build, um, I just think by the time we make it hinge and go away just to do propane tank, it's just going to be a lot more work and just more complex unnecessarily. We can just build that, that shelf pretty much permanently out of steel tube, uh, make it go down to the trailer frame. And then also the frame that you saw in the last video, this, there's a one inch by one inch aluminum frame that this whole box is constructed around that just sets on. So we can tie into the trailer frame, which is steel, and then we can tie in with bolts to this aluminum frame. And then we'll have a nice steady shelf for that hot box that can essentially be ratchet strapped down and maybe they can just leave it on there all the time. And then they don't have to uh, constantly pull it off. Uh, one thing to think about when you do that, I mean, this is a short tongue. That's like 36 inches or so. Um, and then let's say you put a box of six outs here, you know, every time you turn, you might make contact with that box or that shelf, which is not good. So we got some thinking to do on that part. But continuing on. Another interest that was discussed is a kind of a serving platform here because right now as they're serving out of the steamer here that you know they've got to hold the plate and serve the food on and uh, there's not really a place to set food or to set the plate when you're serving the food onto it so a little shelf here so what we're going to do here is pretty much extend these handles out another uh, like 11 inches uh, put a piece of aluminum across a custom cutting board because cutting boards are always useful and if you don't want it then just take it off but it'll be you know custom size to cover about half of this so you can do your chopping here you can set your plate here uh, for serving or vice versa chopping cutting board there plate here and then your food in here that you're serving on the plate um, and then it'll still have your your handles your bicycle grips here so that you can push this this trailer around as we add stuff to it, the trailer's gonna get heavier, but it's still super mobile and portable the way it is, so I don't think the uh, extra 100 pounds we're gonna add to it uh, with these modifications is really gonna change that. So it's important that we keep these handles for mobility. Let's see, what else, what else? Ah, I noticed we had these great value stick-on lights. Looks like they take a couple triple A's. But I got to thinking, you know, when you're making. But I got to thinking when you're making all that cheddar and the sun starts to go down, you don't really want to leave. So let's throw some lights on here that tie into the battery. That battery is an eight amp hour. Oh, that's where all the water's coming from. Bunch of ice. You don't really want to pull off as soon as the sun goes down and it'd be nice to have uh, some lights that tie into the batteries but I don't want anything too intrusive more of like a, maybe like a bit of a work light but like a, a floodlight work light more so than a spotlight so what I think I'm gonna do is up in here uh, on an angle back on on an angle back on this wall here, we'll install uh, just a couple little tabs, and then we can. There's these uh, quad LED lights that I have in my camper that are really nice, and they're really low amp draw. Um, and we'll just throw a couple of those in up here, and then we'll put the switch down here by the water pump switch and our battery monitor that we installed last time. We'll just throw another switch over here for the lights and uh, then we'll have some nighttime after, late afternoon work lights. Just something that kind of shines down in like this area. Nothing too, like I said, nothing too intrusive, just a little, uh, you know, background light, if you will. 
So you can still kind of see all this area here without like blinding everybody who comes up to the cart. All right, one of the last shortcomings that uh, we're gonna work on with this cart, it was requested to put like a cooking utensil shelf here. Uh, Cause as you're over here, working on your griddle, you don't want to put your dirty, greasy spatula down here on your kind of serving, money-making platform. Uh, get that dirty utensil out of the way. So uh, we're gonna, so we're gonna see if we can put together a small shelf right around here that doesn't. It still lets the uh, hot water heater vent, uh, but also you know, size of a spatula or something that you can just set it on there. And your mess is up here out of the way. You can wipe that down every now and then. And your griddle's here so we don't have to reach very far do what it is you need to do and then put the spatula back or your tongs or whatever and one of the things one of the things we have to consider when we're doing this is that big vinyl cover that goes over this whole cart because uh, it it hugs us pretty tight so uh, this shelf needs to fold up or fold down or something um, and I don't quite have that figured out, but we're gonna figure that out as we go. That'll probably be one of the, uh, something I think about while I work on the rest of this stuff. I have enough of these hinges that I could just simply use these and put the shelf up here. So that might be the answer. Try not to overthink it. You know, I think that'll fit underneath the uh, the cover quite nicely. And I think it's just as simple as uh, drilling a couple holes in here and putting some good rivets there and there. And then we've got a nice 12 inch by nine inch shelf for utensils. But hey, let's stop talking and start building. We got some aluminum sheet over here already marked out and uh, I destroyed my last aluminum cutting blade in the circular saw, so the next step is to get that new blade thrown in the circular saw and then get this aluminum sheet cut up into the pieces we're going to use. So if you're cutting on some aluminum and all you have is a circular saw, yeah, I want one of those nice metal cutting saws, but uh, it's just not in the cards for me quite yet. Maybe a couple more uh, potato cart repairs and uh, I'll be there. But until then, I've just had a standard cheapy i think it was like a 60 dollar port of cable circular saw and uh this is a an rpm matching 6000 max rpms and these saws run around there give or take a couple hundred rpms but this is 62 seven and a quarter inch specifically for aluminum right there aluminum metal cutting so we're gonna chuck this up into the uh, the old saw. All right, so this is a cut line. And this is our griddle shelf. This is the bottom. This is a score line. And what my plan is there is we, we talked about that back to the shelf. Well, I don't want to cut all the way through it because then I have to weld the whole thing back. And if you have a seam or a crack on the inside of it, it's going to be really hard to like get your food and grease out from that seam unless you weld it a bead the whole way across. And I could do that, and I might end up doing that, but my intent is to score this just enough that we can bend it up and then just do some filler weld on the back. That'll leave a nice clean corner on the inside, the usable side where you're gonna be doing all your cooking and cleaning and stuff, and that leaves our weld bead on the outside of the back side. And we really don't even need to weld the whole thing on the back at that point, just a couple spots so that it stays in the upright position and it doesn't keep wanting to fold over and cause metal fatigue and fall off.
Yeah, so what's that craftsman warranty look like these days, Lowe's? You guys think they're gonna take that thing back? Or am I just gonna be wasting my time? It's supposed to hold like a thousand pounds or 1100 or something crazy unbelievable. I was impressed that it held that truck bed. Now I'm unimpressed that it can't hold my 180 on a bad day self up. We got the cobalt ones out now, so hopefully they uh, hold up a little bit longer than that last one did. But man, how about working in no space? I need to get this other project out of here. If it wasn't so dang cold outside or dark already, I'd roll it on out in the side yard and give myself some more room. So probably see it gone tomorrow because this is not working for me. All right, let's get some more aluminum cut. Paint's still wet in there. a little buddy tab. And when you're done, it gives you something to grab onto and pull off. They call it a buddy tab because you uh, pull some tape off your roll, put a tab on it so when your buddy comes to use it, bam, ready to go. Doesn't have to go digging and scratching for it. So always buddy tab your tape. Alright, so we got the side griddle shelf installed. Don't mind uh, a little bit of that. First time using the spool gun. And I really like using that thing. Super convenient for aluminum. Got the uh, hinges attached. Got some bracing. As you can see, this thing right here, that's my hand. So my hand is bigger, almost bigger. And that opening, so getting my butt in there with a welding helmet and that spool gun is tight. But those welds are going to be plenty strong enough. So uh, let's get on to the next part of this build. And that's going to be this shelf right here. Uh, so we got to extend these handles and then put our, uh, our platform across. Let's get to it.
So like we discussed before, there's gonna be a shelf here. So we need a plan B for this propane tank holder. And this is that plan B. Gonna have this piece at a 45 here, a piece at a 45 there, a tab with a hole over here, same on the other side, and a cinch strap. All right, so we're doing the water lines now for the faucet. And I just wanna make sure that you guys get the same claustrophobic experience that I get in this build. So we'll refer once again to this opening here, which is uh, probably about 10 inches or so. Oh, look at that. Uh, nine and a half inches. And we're gonna climb in here We've already done a bunch of wiring in here tonight, but now we're gonna do some plumbing. So, let's see. with your elbows. Oh, get that light up out of the way. That's a new rip in the hoodie. All right. So we're in here now. And we've got to get that fitting where that valve is off. And put that T in its place right there. Well, the other way. Well, the other way. It goes like, like that. And the end of this hose screws onto that male valve. And then this screws onto this male thread here. And then we have cold water to the sink and to the steam tank or the steam yeah we're just gonna call it a steam tank so i'll try and keep you guys in here for this but there is not a lot of room so let's see if we can turn some wrenches all right so i broke this one loose earlier so it's hand tight put pipe dope on that last time and I'm not really sure why but I mean it can't hurt but it's also not necessary In review, 
we repainted, well, we stripped, filled in some holes, and repainted the snowboard, turned it into a condiment shelf as requested. That folds down. Up front here, we have a nice little shelf with anchors for the plastic hot box. And as you can see here, that's all my weight. She is perfectly strong enough. I weigh probably about 170, 180 pounds right now. Uh, I doubt that box is going to weigh that much. So uh, two anchor points, perfectly sized in between them for the hot box. So you can ratchet strap it down, leave it in place. Cinch strap anchor there. Come around here, cinch strap anchor. You can uh, hook the hose right up there. And then uh, when you want to take the propane tank off, you don't have to lift it up anymore. You lift it out the front. And then when you don't have the propane tank connected, you slide it in there, give her a little twist. Not coming out. Just uh, got a hole here that is uh, larger than this portion right here. And then we have this slot cut into it. You can see with my hand there. And that is the exact width of this. So you slide that down and you give a little rotation and it can't come out. So now you don't have to necessarily worry about bungee cording it down or anything like that. It's pretty well locked in there when you're not riding around with a propane tank in the new propane tank holder. Another request we have here was a place for the griddle to sit so we don't have to bring another table along with us to use the griddle, so. Griddle surface, perfect. We got a uh, backsplash. So as we're scraping on the griddle, it doesn't fall off the backside. And then uh, you're using your utensils as you cook something. Do you want to put your utensil on your clean surface over here? No. So of course you need a utensil shelf. Working a little late at night, selling those uh, last couple hot dogs or potatoes. It's getting a little dark out. You want to keep making some money. Ah, some nice ambient lighting. Not so much that it's intrusive, but just enough that it lights up your work area. Time to fill up the tub here with some water. Well, you can muscle up a jug, pour it in there, or... Whoop, there we go. Faucet. Turn her on. Let it fill up. Turn it off. You can leave it up. And we moved it close to the umbrella post. That way it's not in the way. If we had to put it out here or put it reverse, I mean, now it's just less space you have out here. So it's kind of protected over here by the umbrella post and it's out of your way. Time to wrap it up for the night. Fold her on flat. All right, and uh, the last thing we worked on for this portion the serving platform. We added in uh, 300 millimeters or 11.8 inches of uh, aluminum. It's 22 millimeter or also uh, I think it's 7 eighths inch. So we could just use our standard grips from like a bicycle here. Got some real nice ones. Added this platform, custom cutting board that fits can go there you can slide over this way but that side has a uh, that's where we left the edge so your cutting board won't slide off so we still have to get it out in front of the house tomorrow in the sunlight put some water in that tank and uh, just kind of have a good look at this thing spread off the hose clean it up it is full of overspray dust uh, <laughs> aluminum shards because like I said those things go everywhere so we're going to get this thing out tomorrow morning, fill her up, kind of run it through a little functions test, and uh, get it ready for the owners before we send it on its way.